I'm Alicia Pelton, Principal Program Manager for Microsoft Research AI. I'm going to talk to you about machine teaching and our machine teaching tool, Pickle. Traditional machine learning is about extracting knowledge from data. What we're doing is different. Machine teaching is about extracting knowledge from the human teacher that's used to train a machine learning model. This technique is useful for scenarios where lots of labeled data isn't already readily available. Pickle enables people without ML expertise to build ML classifiers and extractors quickly and without the hassle and cost of outsourced labeling. Because the human teacher is transferring their knowledge to the machine in terms that they understand, this technique has the added benefit of creating models that are simpler to interpret, explain, debug, and share. I'm going to introduce you to building both a classification and extraction model in Pickle and I'll show you how powerful decomposing a problem and combining models can be. We're going to look at a partially completed recipe classifier that will tell me if a particular web page, which we've just stripped the text out of, includes a complete recipe. You can think of a scenario where you ask Cortana, show me some recipes for dinner, and Cortana knows which pages include recipes by using this predictive model. First thing a teacher does is articulate patterns in the data that help them make their decisions. To get started, I've created these explanations that have common words which might appear as section headings in a recipe. The second thing a teacher does is look for examples and labels them. I've searched for a recipe that we can label as positive. Yellow highlights are for my search term, and blue highlights are for words that are contained in my explanations. We can see that our current in-progress model does not think this is a recipe. We can see that because the score is lower than our 0.5 decision boundary. So to label this, I'll click the green thumbs up and submit. That kicks off an automatic retrain of the model with this new labeled example. Each one of these boxes corresponds with an example that I've already labeled. Green ones are positive labels, red are negative, and blue are examples I wasn't sure about. They're shown on this scale with zero at the bottom and one at the top to show the score that the current in-progress model is predicting for each one. This is how the teacher gets feedback to enable them to debug the model. When your model is doing well, you'll see green boxes clustered around the top and red boxes clustered around the bottom. Let's inspect an example that my model is predicting poorly on. By clicking on this box in the Review Model pane, I can review this positive example which has a low score. What in the text would help my model understand that this is a recipe? All recipes have a semi-structured list of ingredients, so this could be a very strong signal of a recipe. By creating an extractor model in Pickle, we can identify parts of a document that are structured like three tablespoons of peanut oil or one medium yellow onion chopped. Since there wasn't an existing ingredient extractor, I built one from scratch. This can be done as a separate model inside Pickle using the same data source that I'm using for the recipe classifier. Let me show you what this looks like. Let's open my ingredient extractor. You can see that the interface for the extractor model is very similar to the classification model. The main difference is that we are labeling segments inside the document instead of labeling the entire document. Segment labels are called entities and can be decomposed into sub-entities. This fine grade labeling simplifies debugging and improves performance. I've already done the same search for a recipe that we did with the recipe classifier. The blue highlights show where my model is predicting that there are ingredients. My model's getting lots of the ingredients right, but not all of them. So I would continue to correct the errors by creating more explanation and labeling more ingredient examples like this to increase the accuracy. Once I believe my ingredient extractor is good enough, I can go back to my recipe classifier and import it as a feature. My extractor model isn't perfect, but let's see what happens when we use it as an input for our classifier. I will turn on the ingredient extractor and the model will automatically retrain with this new feature. Now you can see that my model is predicting perfectly for the examples I've labeled. Breaking the concept down and creating that extractor was a very effective way for me to improve my classifier. And decomposition might have other benefits too. I could use that ingredient extractor to create a shopping list app. What I've just showed you represents about a day's worth of work for one person, starting with no labels and requires no deep ML knowledge. It's very quick to get up and running. So it's great to enable 
more people to build machine learning models. And we can even envision scenarios where consumers can build models on their own personal data. But this really gets exciting when we create an ecosystem where teacher knowledge in the form of building block models is shared, reused, and extended. 